Good morning. This is morning prayer for Tuesday, September 24th. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Alleluia. Holy One, my God, how I needed you. My very soul thirsted for you. My body fainted with longing for you, like a dry and waterless desert. Then I saw you in the holy place, gazing on your power and glory. Surely your faithful love is better than life itself. My lips proclaim your praise. Therefore, I shall bless you all my life. In your name, lift up my hands in prayer. You satisfy my body with richest food. My lips shout your praise. On my bed, when I think of you, I meditate upon you in the night watches, for you have always been my help. In the shadow of your wings, I shout for joy. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 78, verses 1 to 39. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter hidden things, things from of old. What we have heard and known, what our fathers have told us, We will not hide them from their children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob, and he established the law in Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. They would not be like their forefathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. The men of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by his law. They forgot what he had done, the wonders he had shown them. He did miracles in the sight of their fathers, in the land of Egypt, in the region of Zoan. He divided the sea and led them through. He made the water stand firm like a wall. He guided them with the cloud by day and light from the fire all night. He split the rocks in the desert and gave them water as abundant as the seas. He brought streams out of a rocky crag and made water flow down like rivers. But they continued to sin against him, rebelling in the desert against the Most High. They willfully put God to the test by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a desert, a table in the desert? When he struck the walk, water gushed out and streams flowed abundantly. But can he also give us food? Can he supply meat for his people? When the Lord heard them, he was very angry. His fire broke out against Jacob, and his wrath rose against Israel, for they did not believe in God or trust in his deliverance. Yet he gave a command to the skies above and opened the doors of the heavens. He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them the grains of heaven. Men ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. He let loose the east wind from the heavens and led forth the south wind by his power. He rained meat down on them like dust, flying birds like sand on the seashore. He made them come down inside their camp all around their tents. They ate till they had more than enough, for he had given them what they craved. But before they turned from the food they craved, even while it was still in their mouths, 
God's anger rose against them. He put to death the sturdiest among them, cutting down the young men of Israel. In spite of all this, they kept on sinning. In spite of his wonders, they did not believe. So he ended their days in futility and their years in terror. Whenever God slew them, they would seek him. They eagerly turned to him again. They remembered that God was their rock, that God Most High was their Redeemer. But then, they would flatter him with their tongues, lying to him. Their hearts were not loyal to him. They were not faithful to his covenant. Yet he was merciful. He forgave them iniquities and did not destroy them. Time after time he restrained his anger and did not stir up his full wrath. He remembered that they were but flesh, a passing breeze that does not return. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading appointed for this morning is Acts chapter 18, verses 12 to 28. While Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him into court. This man, they charged, is persuading the people to worship God in ways contrary to the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Gallio said to them, If you Jews were making a complaint about some misdemeanor or serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to listen to you. But since it involves questions about words and names and your own law, settle the matter yourselves. I will not be a judge of such things. So he had them ejected from the court. Then they all turned on Sosthenes, the synagogue ruler, and beat him in front of the court. But Gallio showed no, no concern whatever. Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at Centuria because of a vow he had taken. They arrived at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to spend more time with them, he declined. But as he left, he promised, I will come back if it is God's will. Then he set sail from Ephesus. When he landed at Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church, then went down to Antioch. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scripture. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. When Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. On arriving, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed, for he vigorously refuted the Jews in public debate, proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the responsory. Open my eyes, O Lord, so that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, so that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Open my eyes, O Lord, so that I may see the wonders of your law. Remember your word to your servant, because you have given me hope. 
Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. We continue with the canticle from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 3 to 5. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, so that God may teach us the divine ways, and so we may walk in those paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations, and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn more any, any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people, the prayers of the community, with the litany. God of Jacob, may all who call themselves Christians become a priestly people to the praise of Christ Jesus our Lord. God of compassion, teach us your ways. May Andrew, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the gospel. God of compassion, teach us your ways. May Charles, our king, the leaders of the nations lead their peoples into quiet and peaceable lives. God of compassion, teach us your ways. Show your goodwill to all who live in our city, our province, and this country of Canada. We pray for the poor, the elderly, and young men and women. God of compassion, teach us your ways. Help and defend the victims of our society, especially those who are hungry and those who are unhoused. And we pray for those who minister to them. God of compassion, teach us your ways. Strengthen the faith of those who are preparing for baptism or confirmation and those who have been recently baptized. God of compassion, teach us your ways. Count us among all your faithful witnesses, all the saints who have found favor in your sight from prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known unto you alone. And this morning we pray for those who are, who are sick, for those who have any need or trouble. We pray especially for rail Ray and Gail Dickey, for Tom and his wife Karen and family, for Joe and Terry and their family. We pray especially for Joe as he is ending the nearing the end of his life. We pray for Gerald, for Gwen, for Audrey, Vicky, Janet, for all who have any form of cancer, for those who are grieving. And we think especially at this time of students and teachers. God of compassion, teach us your ways.
Eternal God and Father, you create and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit. Give ourselves in love and service to one another and to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord find us watching and waiting for God's return. Amen.